Okay, we're going to work on a couple of elements to uh, turn this uh, basic interaction into a game. There's a few things we can do, um, and they might not go hugely smoothly because there's quite a uh, there's quite a lot of things that can go wrong. But we'll see how it goes. Um, so the first thing is that we've got this game which is uh, working reasonably well, where we've got a ball that can move and bang into this uh, post, which I've been playing around with. The spacebar kind of. Um, uh, stops the motion so we can get re, re getting control of our speed if we need to um, uh, but that's uh, static at the moment uh, like a wall or a floor so what we could do is turn that into almost like a bowling pin so uh, let's stop that um, so with this selected if I scroll down and untick the static um, then that changes it to a zero I actually want to get rid of that that's quite important so I need to use the cross um, if I'm going to use the collisions, if there's anything in there, then it won't work properly. So that's quite important. Um, it took me a little while to work that out. Um, so we can scale this down a little bit in a, a number of directions um, and uh, until we're happy with it. There we go. Um, and we will make a few copies um, of this uh, so that we can uh, play around with knocking them over a little bit. Um, so there we go. I will space them out uh, just into a fairly random pattern and we'll work with that as it is. So now that they've been uh, set up, they will knock over and knock into each other. Notice that I uh, changed the first of all, the first one I changed from being static. So now hopefully all the others will also not be static. Where is it? There it is. So uh, collisions. So we'll just double check a couple of the others. Yeah, so uh, that should be absolutely fine. So now when I press play and I start moving the ball around, I should be able to knock them over, which is quite good fun. All right, so uh, now I've got some bowling pins. Um, it might be quite good fun to be thinking, well, what happens if the ball um, accidentally goes outside? Let me just stop that quick. Goes outside and it drops down. Well, look what's happened. I've ended up all the way down here. So it would be much better if I made it so that it restarted when the ball came out of the maze. So uh, let's do that first of all, and then we'll go on to some slightly more advanced stuff that you can uh, that you can then adapt and play around with. So the first uh, thing is we need to start detecting when the ball drops. So let's give this a go. I'm going to select the sphere. I'm going to make another loop uh, that means I can collapse this one so we don't interfere with any of the stuff that we've done so far so down here I'm going to make a new loop I'm going to drag that in now this loop is going to be looking for when the ball comes outside of here so um, we want to condition uh, that if <clears throat> if and then we're going to need a variable so if uh, this x, um, no, it's y. If this y, so if this y, if variable y becomes less than minus 10, then we want it to restart. So actions would be restart. So there's a new one for you. So um, if you haven't seen actions down here, there's a few things that are quite uh, useful in there, but restart is probably the most common one. Um, so if variable y becomes less than 10 and restart, and it's going to listen out for that on the ball. Um, let's see if that works. I didn't try it out beforehand, so um, it looks like it will work for the logic. Let's give it a go. There you go. So that's working absolutely fine. So this means that I'm never going to get to the point now where my ball is uh, going off into the distance. So quite a useful little thing. So that's that one done. Now. Um, uh, I probably want to work on another loop. Um, let's say, uh, yeah, let's do labels. So um, I could have a second player that was playing another different, a different ball uh, on WASD, uh, and at the same time as I'm playing, we could be knocking things over and getting scores. We could make them disappear visibly. Um, but there's all sorts of things we could do. But one thing that a lot of people are going to want to do is to display some kind of a score. So to do that, you need to make uh, some items. So first of all, we're going to need a variable that is going to hold the score. So that needs to be separate from anything else. So I'm going to drag that in this variable. We we'll call it score, um, and we'll set it to zero to begin with. So that's the first thing we need. 
Um, then we're going to need a couple of labels. So labels are inside 2D models. Um, you've got messages and labels. A message can pop up when you bump into something, when you collide with something, um, and a label uh, will just stay on the screen the whole time. So we'll use labels, but messages would, might be good to say things like, congratulations, you've completed the level. Um, so we'll use a label, um, and we will put it into this main level area. Uh, so that when we go to the next scene, it will change. And this label is going to say score. Um, so uh, we'll call it score there with a capital S. Um, we're not going to name it score, actually. We're going to, uh, we'll call it score one because uh, the variable is called score. Or uh, let's, call, let's call it score label um, so that we know what it is. Um, then we can change the color and we can have a little bit of fun with this. Uh, you can see it's up here in the top corner. It's really tiny at the moment. So uh, the font we can change to uh, Arial. Um, so we should be able to play around with some different uh, fonts, um, uh, but we'll see how it goes. The size, let's put that up to 40. Um, if you use the scale X and Y, you'll start to get it to go blurry. So we so really, it's better to use the size here than to use the scale of X and Y if you can avoid it. Um, we can make it bold and we can give it a drop shadow, which is quite nice. Um, doesn't work with the dark color, so I'm going to switch the drop shadow off. Um, and we do want it visible. So that's the uh, score label. So we also need a label that's actually going to hold the score. So this label is going to have uh, just the score of zero at the moment. Um, and we'll call it... Uh, score uh, no for number um, and I think I'll put just an underscore in there so that I've got it separated um, and in this one I want to drop down you can see it was too high so let's just drop it down below and again we're going to change the color let's make it green um, let's make it darker green than that I've got quite a lot of green in my scene um, and again, we'll go up to 40 uh, and we'll make it bold and we'll leave it there. So now I've got a score of zero. So what I need to do is I need to tell it that this um, value needs to update this. And I want it to do that when something is triggered. So again, I'm going to need a loop. So let's shrink that one down. Let's make a new loop. So I'm going to go to animations loop and drag that one in. Let's put it in the right place. Um, and this loop is going to be listening for when it bumps into, let's just say, one of these pillars for now. Um, so let's go collision, if collide, and as long as I have got those, uh, those zeros out of the way with the crosses that I showed you earlier, then that should work. So if collision, um, and then we will go and find if it collides with, uh, and we're going to want to know which one it is actually. I'm going to need to name one of these. So let's select one. There it is, and let's give it the name one for the sake of argument. So there it is. And so now if I go into if collision, we should have one there. Yep. And click OK. So now I've got if it's colliding with one, what I want to do is I want to increment. And I want to increment score. Remember is the variable. Um, and I want to increment it by one. So that will make the score go up by one. Now at the same time, I want to make sure that I am setting, um, I'm pretty sure it's set, I'm setting the variable. Um, in this case, it's going to be uh, the score number and it's the text in that. And I want to set it to whatever score is. So whatever that is. So I've linked them together inside the if loop. So it's only going to up, be trying to update it when this is being triggered, so when it's touching. Um, now, it's, it, there's uh, a lot of refinement you could do to this, but let's see if this works. So I'm aiming for this. We're going to have to see if we can find this one when we play, because uh, I've got, uh, oh, name cannot start with a number. Oh, sorry about that. So let's change that to I. Uh, it is a much better idea than using a number. That's right. Um, so let's try that. So if I bump into some of these, let's see if we can find the one that's going to pick up a score. I think it's over here. Okay, so what's gone wrong there, I'll almost guarantee, 
but it is the fact that I've got a zero probably on this ball, which is not, and I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second. So if I make this collide with I, let's just um, make this collide with I, then it should sort it out. Let's go to the ball, and let's scroll down. X, Y, if I have not got one there, so let's go to the, where is I on the cylinder? And scroll down there, make sure I've got no, oh, okay. So let's just have a look at this bit of code then. So if collision name, oh, I need to change that to I. There you go, it didn't update. Okay, so there we go. Um, let's play that again. There we go, first time lucky. So you can see the score is already up to 31. So we need to do a little bit of editing to make that work. Um, but essentially, we could find the score. There's the scoring one, it's called I, and I'm pushing it around. So we could do all sorts of things here to do with kind of almost like hot potatoes, passing it quickly um, and playing around with uh, scoring uh, and, and developing it from there. You've got the basic construct, so hopefully that's useful. It's been quite a long tutorial, but uh, but there's various bits inside there that have, uh, that, that you could play around with and enjoy.